After not seeing him for a month, Kevin handed me a divorce lawyer's business card without even asking how I was doing. Divorcing a wife who doesn't work? Pay me $2,000 a month as alimony. Sounds good, take care, Kevin said with a chuckle, standing next to Julie who was wrapping her arm around him, both wearing smug expressions. Fine, let's divorce then. I said so casually that Kevin seemed a bit surprised, but he quickly shared his smile with Julie. Good thing Olivia isn't much of a thinker. It makes my plan easier to execute. After the divorce papers were approved, I decided to start my revenge plan on both of them. I will make them regret this as a celebration of my recovery. My name is Olivia Wilde. I'm a 50-year-old illustrator, and I also work as a children's book author. I love drawing. I have two childhood friends, Kevin and Julie. They're important to me, and Kevin is also my husband. It all started when Kevin asked me out as I was heading to a different college after high school. I was surprised, I thought he was into Julie, but I couldn't say no to a confession from Kevin, whom I had secretly liked. After some thought and talking it over with Julie, I accepted Kevin's proposal. Julie's behavior had been problematic since our teenage years, but she was still a dear friend to both Kevin and me. However, Julie had a tendency to steal other people's boyfriends and then dump them once they became obsessed with her, causing problems repeatedly. Her parents were concerned, so Kevin and I often spent time with her to keep an eye on her. Kevin and I got married when we were 23. Five years later, Julie introduced her fiancé, Paul, a professional working for a top-tier company. Nice to meet you, Olivia and Kevin. I've heard so much about you. Looking forward to our future together, Paul said politely when we met. We all got along well right away. During holidays and vacations, we would take trips or long train rides to enjoy some drinks together. However, things started to change after Julie got pregnant, three years into her marriage. Kevin and I had many siblings, so we were never worried about having our own children. We decided not to have kids. We both love kids but weren't interested in the responsibilities of raising them. Besides, we enjoyed our freedom to travel and have drinks. We often found it heartwarming to see families with children, but that was it. When Julie announced her pregnancy, Kevin's behavior began to change. He quit smoking because Julie couldn't stand the smell and even used his vacation days to drive her to doctor's appointments. I warned him, Paul might get upset if you're always with Julie. But Kevin argued back, you have work, don't you? She's our childhood friend and she need help. You're heartless, I said. I've been buying things and helping where I can, but going with her to the doctor is too much. Kevin frowned and then glared at me. Why? Because Julie wants it. She's anxious about the checkup. I can't just let her go alone if she's anxious. All the more reason for Paul to go with her, right? If you go with her every time, it's almost like you're the father of the baby, I replied. Jealous? You're not going to get pregnant anyway, so what's the problem? He snapped back. He didn't take my concerns seriously and started to get annoyed. We hardly ever fought during our marriage, but things changed when Julie got pregnant. Our arguments increased and didn't stop even after Julie gave birth. In fact, Kevin started spending even more time with Julie and their child, Lauren. But when Lauren was five, an incident occurred related to Lauren's graduation ceremonies. The day before the graduation, Kevin suddenly started rummaging through the closet. Kevin, what are you doing? I have a meeting tomorrow, he replied. Kevin's workplace had a casual dress code, but there was a rule to wear a suit during client meetings, so he always kept a few suits ready. Now, they were all thrown on the bed. Ah, no, just trying to decide what to wear for the graduation ceremony, he said, changing his answer. Are you really thinking of going to the graduation? Paul can't make it and Julie asked me, Kevin said. I was shocked and raised my voice without thinking. That's absurd, no matter how you look at it. Kevin's face turned sour immediately. I knew he sometimes picked Lauren up from kindergarten, and I had too when asked. But it seemed ridiculous for a childhood friend, 
who wasn't even her biological parent, to attend a graduation ceremony. Do you still doubt me and Julie? I'm disappointed that you can't even help out, Kevin said. That's not the point. Anyway, I'm attending the graduation tomorrow. So iron a shirt properly, Kevin said, ending the conversation abruptly and walking to the bedroom. I had no choice but to call Julie. Hello, Julie, about tomorrow. Ah, sorry about tomorrow. I'm borrowing Kevin, but won't Paul be upset about the graduation attendance? Olivia, what are you talking about? Obviously, I haven't told Paul that the graduation is tomorrow. I'll tell him after the ceremony, Julie replied. I was shocked to learn that Paul didn't know about the graduation schedule. Upon further questioning, it seemed that Julie hadn't informed Paul about any of the kindergarten events so far, and Kevin had been acting as the father of the kindergarten, which made me feel dizzy with its selfishness. Wait a minute, Julie. Isn't that extremely unreasonable? It's disrespectful to Paul, I said. What's wrong, Olivia? You're scary. Well, see you tomorrow, Julie said, hanging up the phone unilaterally. Trembling with anger, I still ironed a shirt, prepared a tie, and the next morning saw Kevin off to Lauren's graduation ceremony. Since then, Julie and Kevin started going out more frequently, from once a month to once a week, and then to three times a week. Eventually, even Paul seemed to have some suspicions. One day, while Kevin and Julie were out, he visited our house alone late at night. I'm sorry for visiting you late at night. There's something that's been bothering me. Is it about the two of them? Paul asked. Yes, I would like you to take a look at this, Paul said, showing me the GPS history he had installed in Julie's car. It showed that she had been staying at a hotel three times a week. All of those days, she was out with Kevin. Just by looking at Paul's face, I understood what that meant. What do you want to do, Paul? I asked. I want to take revenge on those two, I said. Me too. I can't forgive them for betraying us after all this time, Paul agreed. We started planning our revenge in secret. First, I focused on increasing my income. Since I had been saving money by doing housework and taking care of Lauren, my income had decreased significantly. Paul switched to working from home. When Julie and Kevin would go out, he would bring Lauren to my house, and we would take care of her together. Neither Julie nor Kevin knew that we were aware of their affair, and we managed to gather solid evidence against them. Once we had collected enough evidence and were ready to take our revenge, we discovered a shocking truth about Lauren. Paul and I struggled with the decision but we agreed that we didn't want to hurt young Lauren. So we decided to wait until she was an adult to take our revenge. However, even though we decided to wait for 12 years, I was struck with a serious illness that required long-term hospitalization. At best, I wouldn't be discharged for at least three years. Although I could work from the hospital room, it was clear that I would have to reduce my workload. After telling Paul about my situation, I consulted Kevin, but his reaction was indifferent, just like small talk. I'll visit you once in a while, he said. I felt that Kevin no longer cared for me, as he didn't even ask about my condition or the name of the disease. In reality, Kevin only visited once a month or once every two months. After Lauren's 17th birthday, she started acting strangely, Although she used to visit me almost every day right after I was hospitalized, she became distant after her birthday. Neither Paul nor I could figure out why. Even when we asked Lauren, she just said, don't worry about it. However, we ended up learning the reason from Kevin, who rarely showed up. Hey, it's been a while, he said casually, having completely changed into a flashy appearance. He walked in without knocking. After not seeing him for a month, Kevin just thrusts a divorce lawyer's business card at me without even asking how I was feeling. Divorcing a wife who doesn't work? Pay me $2,000 a month as alimony. That's the deal, so take care, Kevin said, grinning from ear to ear. Beside him, Julie wrapped her arms around Kevin, both wearing similar expressions on their faces. Fine, let's divorce then, I said. 
I agreed to the divorce casually, which surprised Kevin for a moment, but he quickly exchanged smiles with Julie. It was good that Kevin wasn't the type to think too deeply, that's why my plan worked so well. After I got the notification that the divorce was finalized from Kevin, I decided to start my revenge plan against the two of them. I was going to make them regret their actions as a way to celebrate my recovery. I immediately started to take action. First, I contacted Paul to arrange a transfer to a different hospital. Then, I informed my lawyer that they would be handling communications between us from now on. Paul also began to act. He moved near my new hospital with Lauren and started visiting me often. Lauren still looked sad, but I was happy she came to see me every day. Most of my belongings were already in the hospital room, so I told Kevin to get rid of the rest. I didn't want to keep anything that they might have touched in my new life. Once the hospital transfer and Paul and Lauren's move were settled, I received a call from Kevin. I had only been away from my phone for a few minutes, but there were already 50 missed calls. I answered the phone, feeling annoyed. What? Hey, what the hell is going on? I could hear the voice of a troubled real estate agent behind Kevin's panicked voice and Julie yelling, which made me feel sick. What do you mean? What's going on? It's obviously about the house. Why do we have to move out? Kevin shouted at me as if it wasn't his fault at all. Coolly, I replied, obviously, because that's my house. Kevin seemed to have completely forgotten but the truth was the house we lived in was a room I rented as a workspace when I started making a living as a freelancer. At that time, I didn't have enough income to maintain three houses, and Kevin didn't have enough income to live alone, so he ended up moving into my place. Therefore, Kevin had never paid the rent or utility bills for that room. Although I received some money from him for living expenses, it wasn't enough to maintain the place. Unfortunately, that room was already cancelled. It was far from the hospital I transferred to, so I had processed the cancellation the day after submitting the divorce papers. I didn't tell him because the real estate agent, who knew about our situation, said they would contact him. Suddenly, Paul and Lauren disappeared, and our house was sold. What are we going to do about our new house? Kevin asked. I don't know. Maybe stay in a business hotel for now, I said as I turned on the speaker and started working. Kevin yelled in frustration, don't mess with me. However, he seemed to remember something and started speaking in a more soothing tone. Well, whatever, when will you transfer the money? We're running low on cash. What are you talking about? Don't mess around. I told you to pay $22,000, didn't I? He asked. Oh, I don't recall agreeing to that. I responded calmly, which was met with incoherent screaming from Kevin on the other end of the phone. Apparently, he thought he could get money from me and had been spending carelessly. Even if you had $22,000 left, how did you plan to get by for the rest of the month? I questioned. Hey, don't just stay silent, say something, he demanded. There's really nothing to talk about. I retorted, leaving Kevin momentarily dumbfounded. But he soon started yelling again. Growing increasingly annoyed, I addressed Kevin in as cheerful a tone as I could muster, anyway, we're basically strangers now, so please don't contact me anymore. You'll hear from my lawyer. Huh? Lawyer? Hey, wait a minute. Kevin tried to respond, but I hung up without listening. He tried calling back several times, but I ignored it and eventually the calls stopped. However, angry that I didn't answer, Kevin started ignoring calls from my lawyer. He certainly had a childish side, but I never imagined he'd be the kind of person who didn't mind causing trouble for others. I sighed deeply at Kevin's selfishness. A few months later, after a temporary discharge from the hospital, I visited Kevin's parents' house. In front of me were Kevin and Julie, both looking small and trembling. You telling my parents is a low blow, Kevin said. Oh, I just reported that we got divorced, I replied calmly. Kevin glared at me in response, but he shrank back under his father's stern gaze. Actually, I had a great relationship with my in-laws, 
even visiting and dining with them when Kevin wasn't around. Despite being so well-loved, I felt it was important to share the details of our divorce. I went to visit Kevin's parents. Is it true that you're remarrying Julie? I asked. Yes, it's true. Julie, Lauren, and I are going to start over as a family, Kevin replied. What are you talking about? Your only family is Olivia, his father said, clearly upset. She's not my family anymore, Kevin replied, which made his father frown in disbelief. Kevin shook his head a few times, then handed me a piece of paper. It was a bill from a nearby luxury hotel. What's this? I asked. It's the bill from the hotel we stayed at, Kevin said, as if it was obvious, and pointed at the bill on the table. Then he suddenly collapsed. Oh, what the heck, Mom? I didn't raise you to be like this, my mother-in-law gasped for breath, looking at Kevin with disbelief. Next to him, Julie wore the same expression. Why are you so angry? It's just that the family is changing because I'm getting married. Plus, you'll have a grandchild, a blood-related one at that. Aren't you happy? Kevin said. You two didn't. My mother-in-law, looking as if she couldn't believe what she was hearing, glanced at them, then turned her gaze to me. Both my in-laws knew I didn't want children and still treated me as their own daughter. Of course, they treated Julie, my childhood friend, similarly, but there was always a boundary between a daughter-in-law and a friend. I remember Julie often complaining about that, so I was certain my mother-in-law wouldn't be happy about this situation, and Julie should have known it too. You do want Lauren, right? It'll be your grandchild, so you'll be happy, right? It's because she's a child I've known since she was little. Oh, but half of her blood is from Kevin, right? Julie said, showing no remorse and acting as if she couldn't understand the problem, which was unsettling. At that moment, someone who had been silent until now spoke up. Enough already, it's disgusting, Lauren, who had been playing with her smartphone in the corner of the room, spoke to Julie without looking up. The room fell into a stunned silence. My dad is the only one I consider my father, whether we're related by blood or not. He's the only one. But you know, Kevin has always been the one to attend your school events, Lauren continued. I heard everything from dad, how he was always informed of the event dates after they were over, how eventually even the events themselves were kept from him. But dad always said I was his daughter, so I am his daughter, and I will never be yours. Lauren glared at Julie as she said this, then sitting beside me, she switched to a more concerned tone. You know, when I found out about this, I thought you would hate me, but dad said that wasn't the case, so I came here today. Lauren, I love you so much. You were so kind to visit me every day while I was in the hospital. I was really happy, Olivia said. Lauren, perhaps relieved of her anxiety, teared up and hugged me tightly. It might indeed be a child resulting from an affair between Kevin and Julie, yet it's a child I've taken care of for 16 years. There's no way I don't have affection for her, I continued. Speaking of which, Julie, weren't you curious why I wasn't surprised when I found out Lauren is Kevin's daughter? I asked. Julie looked startled, but before she could speak, a new person entered the room. We knew from the start, 12 years ago, actually, Paul suddenly appeared, which was understandable as he had recently asked for a divorce due to irreconcilable differences. I was shocked when you mentioned divorce. Oh, and unfortunately, you're not divorced yet. The divorce papers are still here, didn't you notice? I figured it wasn't in Julie and Kevin's nature to confirm things. But I couldn't help but be stunned that Julie, despite the 200-day waiting period for women to remarry, had not noticed for months. So Julie is still my wife, and Lauren is still my daughter. Well, since there won't be a wife though, Julie interrupted, Wait, what do you mean? A 16-year-old can choose their parent. That's not true. Lauren wants to be with mom, right? Julie said that and looked at Lauren. Lauren frowned at Julie and held my hand. Julie was speechless at that and glared at me. Then Kevin suddenly burst into laughter. So that's what it is, you two are together, huh? 
But too bad, isn't it impossible to live on Paul's salary alone? Can you stop making weird assumptions? Also, it seems Paul earns double the amount you think, I replied. Julie probably knew about it, but it might just be a bluff. Besides, it's impossible for you to work while dealing with your illness. You'll just die miserably somewhere, Kevin said. This time, I laughed at Kevin's huge misunderstanding. Seeing me laugh, Kevin started getting frustrated. You didn't know about my income, did you? It's probably just a bit more than a part-time job, no. It's different. My annual income is $800,000, I said. Kevin's eyes and mouth were wide open in shock. Julie was also stunned. In fact, over the past 12 years, I have become a popular children's book author and my income has really gone up because of essays, interviews, and more. There's even a movie based on my books coming soon, so I'm earning even more. Oh, do you want to see this? I said and showed Julie my bank account on my phone. It clearly showed a lot of money being deposited every month. Julie was speechless when she saw it. Olivia, let's uh, make up, huh? Kevin said, sounding hopeful. What are you saying? Julie was angry at Kevin's words. I just watched them quietly, then finally spoke. Well, if you want to get married, feel free. Oh, and I'll definitely take the compensation for damages. Olivia, wait. Kevin called out, but I ignored him. I took Lauren's hand, said goodbye to my in-laws, and left their house. Kevin used to work at my father-in-law's company, but it was discovered he lied about going out for sales, and he was fired. My father-in-law planned to make him work on a friend's fishing boat, which was tough for Kevin who preferred indoor work. He tried to contact me several times, but I always let my father-in-law know, and eventually, Kevin stopped calling. Julie lost custody of Lauren to Paul and got divorced. She seemed uninterested in Kevin, who couldn't afford luxuries anymore, and didn't chase after him. She was cut off by her family and lived alone in a rundown apartment. She hadn't worked since getting married and had always relied on others, so she found it hard to do things on her own. There were hardly any places that would hire her full-time, but she needed to pay for her living expenses and child support, so she worked multiple part-time jobs and barely made ends meet. After starting high school, Lauren worked hard every day to study abroad, and go to a prestigious university overseas. Being originally diligent, her dream is to translate my picture books and deliver them to children all over the world, which makes me happy. As for me, my picture books are selling well, and I'm getting more offers for animated adaptations and merchandise. My health is also getting better, and although I'm still in the hospital, my doctor recently told me that I might be able to leave the hospital next year. One more thing, Paul and Lauren come to visit me every day. Paul recently confessed to me with remarriage in mind. I haven't given my answer yet, but I can't help but have feelings for him. He said he wants to live together when I leave the hospital. While thinking about what to answer, I work on my picture books every day, hoping for a happy future for us. I weave stories again today.